do. Is dead as a cop. We can still do laundry. What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot, and welcome to another vlog on the channel. Today, we have a 2014 BMW M5 with the competition package. That means in stock form, you get 575 horsepower out of a twin turbo V8. Let's check this thing out. The M series is and always has been BMW's kind of most flagship of the flagships. And when these came out and when they're new in 2013, this just rewrote the book. They've always been fast, but this new model with the twin turbo V8 changed everything. One of the selling points about M cars is that you really kind of have to be a car guy to know when you're looking at one. On the outside, it kind of just looks like a base five series if you don't know. If you do know, you know that there's subtle touches, like first of all, there's a little M badge in the grill there. There's a side vent that says M5 on it and that the standard car doesn't have that. Other than that, you've got the quad exhaust and a little M5 badge right there. Those are little things and you have to be a big car nerd to really, really know that you're looking at something special here, especially in black. It's kind of an unassuming sedan and a little do most people know that there's a monster V8 under the hood. Uh, another thing, this, this car does have the M competition wheels, so it does have a little M in the wheel there, not to mention you have gigantic, gigantic brakes. I mean, hand for scale. And as you can see, this car has the multi-piece steel rotors. These were available with carbon ceramic brakes, but this is a daily driver. You really don't need carbon ceramic brakes for your daily drive. You're just looking at a $8,000 rotor replacement if you get a rock chip, it's, it's silly. Now let's take a look around the rest of it. Inside, you would get what I would call a, an executive class interior, especially for 2014. I know I'm acting like 2014 was like eons ago. It, it wasn't. Sometimes it seems like it. Yeah, in car years, it really does seem like it. You get this big, thick, meaty steering wheel with M stitching on it. It is a dual clutch, seven speed transmission. Walking around the back, you do see, first of all, it does have a back seat. Uh, that's always cool to have a very fast four door sedan with actual usable rear seats. Other than that, what size are these tires? 295 20s. As you can see, they've been, uh, we've been testing them a little bit. And here in just a moment, we're gonna be testing them a lot. The trunk is electronically opening. I went over this with the SL. I love it. This car had a six figure price tag and you expect the trunk to open electronically, but I'm just not crazy about it on sedans because it, it's it's right here. You know, with the, with the SUV, some people have got to jump up and close it. You really need it to, to close electronically. I just don't feel like you need it on a car, but when it gets to be this expensive, I guess it's a why not kind of a feature. Pretty massively spacious trunk. <laughs> Of course, we have my absolute favorite things, an ice scraper and a blanket. This isn't another people's cars episode, even though it feels like one. People in the Midwest are very, very worried that they're gonna get trapped in their cars one day when it snows, and that's your must-have kit. And even in a car like this, it's no exception. Classic BMW toolkit. However, unlike most BMWs that you see on like Watch JR Go's channel and stuff, this one does not have all of the tools. This is not, this is not where I was thinking this was gonna go. <laughs> I don't know where those are. <laughs> I was legit thinking like, this one's gonna have all the tools because this is the original owner. If you need to work on this BMW, you better hope that this Phillips screwdriver is gonna do it for you. It did not go the way I thought it was gonna go. All right, so never mind. It is a thing. Every BMW is missing the tool kit. It's just a BMW thing. If you own a BMW, you get those tools out of there. All right, so now we'll, we're done with the trunk. We'll close it using the feature that I find unnecessary, but we'll use anyway because it's there. And look at that. That's nice. Let's get under the hood because the cool part about this engine is you can see the turbos. Let me see if I can open this with one hand. Yes. Ho oh, oh. ho. Didn't expect that. I expected to fumble with that. This is the twin turbo 4.4 liter V8 in the BMW M5. And as you can see here, these parts that say Dynan, well, they aren't stock, but they are better than stock. And for the record, they were installed by the BMW dealer. So everything you see here is go fast parts still under warranty. Anyway, moving on, you can see here, this is just a really cool, intake snake type of thing that's going on here. And what's really cool is if you look, that is a turbo and that is a turbo. The turbos on this car are actually installed inside the V of the V8 engine. It, it, it's called a hot V placement. And what that does is it pretty much eliminates lag because it doesn't have to go through any exhaust manifold to spool itself up. It just kind of is the exhaust manifold. The cylinder heads are reversed, so the exhaust blows inside the V rather than on the outside. It's really cool, it's race car stuff, but this was one of the first cars to do it on the street. What you end up with is a really, really cool looking engine bay. 
one quick thing this does have a double hood bonk warning you can see here this guy is getting bonked and i'm like okay don't bonk your head on the hood and over here he's getting bonked and that's because you have these two massive harpoons sticking out from the hood that is insane like <laughs> that would be such a problem but it's part of what keeps the hood latched down because this thing's capable of massive speed so you go dual side latches rather than just one single latch like a chevy or something it results in dual bonk head warnings anyway <laughs> let's get this thing out on the road all right we are in the m5 now jacob who you saw lurking in the background of this video this is his car Kind of, call, yeah. Let's call it your car. It's actually the company car. <laughs> okay. Technically. Before we go, though, I do want to show a couple of cool things. This does have a really, really good 360 camera. And remember, this was 2014. That was newfangled. And it still is really, really good. But the other thing is, when you're ready to listen to music, it does have a tweeter that raises up in the middle. And that's always cool. I like body work that moves. I like speakers that move. So with, before we set off, um, if we could, gentlemen, all rise. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was worth every penny. And if you, you're done, you can just say, uh, be seated. Anyway, let's get out on the road and see how it handles, drives. It's not really handling, We're, it's a very straight area here. <laughs> Wichita is predominantly dominated by straight roads and this car is very powerful. So even though this is the competition pack, ooh, ah, that, was, that was so close. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, even though this is the competition package and the handling is very accentuated, it's still very, very fast on straight roads. So you still get to utilize it even in a predominantly straight area like Wichita is. I was, I was looking at the temp gauge and I was like, oh, we can't do any pulls because it's not up to temp yet. But if you look at that, up to temp, according to this, is 250 degrees and that's, that's just not accurate. It's up to temp right now and that would be pretty hot if it was at 250 degrees, but just kind of a bizarre thing. So when I pull out or I pull into this street here, this is going to be getting on it as, as I guess you would, you know, just rolling off the showroom floor. And this is the mode that if you were just cruising to work and somebody did that to you and you did not like it, you could just hammer down and get to it. So I'm going to go straight. All right, wheels are straight. I'm just going to hammer down here. speed that is that was insane if you couldn't tell from my facial reaction this thing is so nuts one thing i thought the gears it was going to be banging through gears you know kind of like a porsche i feel like it runs out of gear a little bit faster but this thing just was a torque train that entire time uh -huh. apparently according to dynan just the intake and the tune in this car takes it from uh, 575 horsepower to over 700 horsepower <laughs> crank and as we all know, these German cars, they underestimate their horsepower yes. rating. So, I mean, we haven't had the car dynoed, but it feels every bit of 700 horsepower. Yeah. Elliot and I both have 700 horsepower cars that we drive on a regular basis. Right. And this feels, for a 4,400 pound car, feels every bit of 700 horsepower. I'll, I'll do this just for, for the audience here, uh, so you can see what I'm seeing. Also, when we clicked into M2, one of the things that's configurable is the heads-up display. The heads-up display got much, much larger. I, I hope that can come up. Yeah, yeah, it's flashing, but that used to be like a little blip in the uh, in the windshield, but now it's it's huge. But what we're gonna try right now is launch control, and it's amazingly easy to do in this car. And it honestly might not be the fastest way to launch it, but it is really cool. When we were kids, launch control was like an aftermarket thing you'd have to tune into a car. So the fact that cars are coming with it now, you always gotta try it out. And foot on the brake, you press and hold the, uh, the stick forward, full throttle. It's not giving me anything. No, nope. okay, hold on. That's not it then. That's not it. We must Google. Must Google. <laughs> we're gonna rejoin this and it's like this never even happened. We're gonna be like, man, we know what we're doing. Launch control. Uh, launch control active. And so then now hold the gas pedal down until RPMs hold, then release the M shift the shifter. It might actually hook better and come. It might. That's not like a cop. That's a cop. Is it coming in, I think? Uh maybe not. Well we'll just inch forward. We can still that is, do that is a cop. Hello, Mr. Officer. 
Good thing I waited on the old launch control. <laughs> that was, oh my God. Well, maybe we were just plane spotting. Yeah. We're at the end of a runway. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like, Plane's well, why spotting. did you guys stop in the middle of the road? Like, I don't know, it's the best way, to, <laughs> best way to stop. You Kansas rural road, man. Like. Right now we're gonna try launch control. We're in a nice closed section of road here. Apparently all you do after turning tractor control off is hold this forward. It says launch control active, and it gives me little flags, and then I can just, and then let go. Whoop. It is, it skates around there. <laughs> it's kind of more like a burnout mode than it is a launch control mode. Regardless, that was eventful. I mean, I, that was so cool that I need to see it done from outside of the car. So Jacob is being so kind enough to do it for me again. That was awesome. That was just another person on our closed road. They're allowed to be here. He's coming back by. Although this car is synthetic audio from the inside, it does sound really, really good on the outside. Oh my God. It sounds like a jet coming and then awesome European V8 sound going. That is, that is a combo. Also guys, this is Kansas. If anybody was wondering, we are not that far outside of town and it is just planes as far as the eye can see. Part of that engine sound that you're hearing is synthetic. What they do is they, they play a tone that matches with the actual engine note and it creates this in-cabin sound. Because what they did with this car is they made it so isolated from the outside that if you, you can't hear the engine anymore. Yep. So they had to do that. I haven't heard such like an uproar about anything a car manufacturer's done since Porsche went with electronic steering. Like people were upset that in an M car they were piping music and basically the exhaust noise through the speakers. That being said, even knowing that it's partially fake, it sounds really cool, and it sounds like this really interesting hybrid engine note that is a combination of V10 and V8. I know that doesn't sound possible, but it is a, a sound that is unlike anything else because it is partially unnatural. <laughs> so let's get this back and we'll wrap it up from there. One side note yeah. is the nice thing, and this is kind of uh, true of most new German cars, is if you're just cruising at a ridiculous speed, say you want to set your cruise control at a speed that may or may not be exceeding the speed limit, your passenger is oblivious to it because this thing feels like you're going 55 at 110. Yeah, until you're passing people like they're standing still. Yeah. This thing is really the, the do-all car. It's like the committee decision with BMW, they just didn't take no for an answer when they said, what do we want this car to do? Yeah. And they're like, we want it to be the nicest, the loudest, the quietest, the fastest, best driving version of a car. And you're like, <laughs> some of those don't agree. And they're like, yeah. make it, make it happen. And they, they did, they somehow made a car that does all of those things all at once. Yeah. It, all right, so we're back. That's pretty much gonna be it for the M5. This thing is nuts. It is literally the do everything car. It's sports car fast, it blends in like no other, but it's also a crazy luxurious place to be. But again, the most important part to me is the sports car fast part. And it just, everything that you want in a car, this car has it. All in a package that doesn't scream, look at me. So thank you again, huge shout out to Jacob for bringing the car by and letting us launch it several times and just do flybys and all that stuff. It's awesome. This car is sweet. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, my name is Elliot. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the other normal YouTube stuff, and I will see you on the next video. Man, I mean, even just like mid throttle, there's so much power on top and so much torque. Would you say it has so much torque that the chassis twists coming off the line? Yes. If this thing could hook, the chassis would twist. I don't know if this will come out on camera, but these fans are running after we turn the car off, and that's always a sign of when you know you ran the car hard, but it'll cool itself down in, in no time. It's fine.